Hello and welcome to another edition of Short Shift presented by V8s Online and proudly brought to you by our good friends at Direct Cut Services and of course Track Racer. I'm Stephen Sandman Clark and always on my right, Jay Kennedy. Jay, how you going, mate? Very good, Sandman. Beautiful here, beautiful almost summer's day. <sighs> it's a warm one. It's uh, very, very hot, but we'll get through this, I think. <laughs> it's been a little while between drinks too and uh, a, lot's, a lot has happened yeah. in the uh, iRacing community since our last episode. Absolutely, bucket loads that we'll go through throughout this episode. So it's been a little bit while since we've filmed, but... Uh, great to catch up and have a bit of a chat. Not wrong. And, uh, mate, the one thing uh, that I've been waiting for for such a long time, the release of the Holden VF Commodore is oh, here. It's finally here and we can't stop driving it. It's <laughs> totally amazing beast to drive and, and it's brought a whole new lot of people in to drive the car and we'll drive the series. We've seen record numbers uh, since the release of the uh, old falcon yep it's been the last time i've seen this sort of numbers in the amount of races that are going live and official so great to see and um absolutely awesome to have a commodore in iRacing finally and it's only going to get better mate because uh, once i do the update to the falcon which we believe isn't too far away that the series is going to go off yeah we will have our ford versus holden battle finally yes. after all this time um i don't think there'll be too many driving fords well not me I've, yeah, done. <laughs> I've done my uh, fair stint of driving those things, and yep. uh, yeah, well, we won't go into too much of that. We might end up in, in an argument about it all, but uh, no, glad to have the Commodore on board, and uh, yeah, when the Falcon gets uh, released, we're hearing around the, what, 1st of December mark? I guess yeah, that's what they're December trying build, to do. Yep. Yeah, so, so... With this little short six-week season they've got at the moment, the next build won't be far away, so... Uh, we'll see the Falcon out on track versus the Holden very, very soon. And as we touched on with the release of the Holden, uh, one thing that we awfully got excited about was driver swaps. And didn't we get straight into it with uh, the Bathurst 1000? How good was that? The time has come to say goodbye. To one of the greats of our time. It has seen champions come and go. And entertained the crowd with quite a show. We are racing at Mount Panorama. So the Revs rise for the final round of the iRacing V8 Supercar Series. A grand finale at Oran Park. We are underway. He's going to have the jump. Addison now with a fantastic start. Played on Oh, contact! Oh, 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 contact! Dan Madison down, has gone round! Oh, oh more contact! Oh, Ruggie is around! He's big one! And he's oh, going to collect it! Huge incident! Three or four cars all in play! This is it! Jared's going to get a run down the front straight! He's carrying that pace all the way to the start finish line! Right. On this turn, you'll steer too wide! He's touched so the grass! That's where he's on! Oh, he's fast! Oh, he's fired off through the gravel! He's going to keep it up the tyres! Oh, he's going to get it! It's a battle of the brake pads, they go into the chicane, trying to go, go too much curve, a little bit sideways. Oh, Madison has got the inside. Oh, almost contact between teammates. Hampstead will win. Race the champion six. Here he comes. Oh, he's held oh, on too much, has he? Oh, he's held on to him. There's a hard stop. Oh, got Michael Schrager's oh, involved. Oh, he's going to go four. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, hold your breath stuff as they come into the turns. Oh, the gain through the hairpin. Look how close it is between both. Oh, well, we're going to pick into the back there in the field. Looks like one of the hyper simulated Falcons. Uh, a dominant season for Madison Down and claims its ninth championship. But a new era is upon us. The car of the future is taking the stage. The future lies behind these wheels and the defining track to name the crown. Great fun. 51 cars ended up qualifying for it and uh, 
Lucky enough, we both finished. I think you finished 24th and we finished 25th. Yeah, it just, it just got you. Us. <laughs> what spot? The last, last stint, Damo passed me with about three to go and I was just holding on to that car <laughs> so I wasn't going to stop him. <laughs> I wasn't going to put up a fight. But yeah, great fun, great concept and um, driver swaps are, are something that's been unbelievable and will only get bit, bigger and better as time goes on. Absolutely thoroughly enjoyed that race. I couldn't believe how much fun it was. Yep. Even though I was teamed up with... Uh, Damo Crash Bandicoot Butler, but uh, I'll give him a bit of stick about that, but uh, it's all fun and games, and that's that's what makes enduro racing so much fun, is because not only have you got to put in a good performance, but your teammate has to as well. Yeah, and it adds an old new uh, element to the racing as well. You, you don't not only want to let yourself down, but you don't want to let your teammate down. You don't want to be the guy in that team that actually crashes the car. Yep. And it's even more pressure on guys that are doing two car, three, uh, sorry, two man, three man, four man, six man races, 24 hour races. The amount of pressure that is going on within these teams is absolutely massive. And TTL, didn't they uh, bring everything to the table? I mean, there was a little little while there where we thought uh, Scotty McLaughlin was going to get up and get the win there, but uh, TTL, such a strong performance in that race. Yeah, did a great job with the strategy there. They really played that strategy game really well with the early stint and um, the early short pit stop and uh, got that out of the way early and just drove the absolute wheels off their car. And um, big credit to Hampstead and Latham. Great drive. Well done. And your take on it? You loved it, even though you guys, uh, well... Pretty much started from last, is that right? Yeah, we we were the wild card entry, so we were supposed to start last, but in the uh, qualifying procedure, someone hit the wall, so we started 50th, finished 25th. Can't complain about that. Very, very happy with that result. And a uh, big thanks to Mike Koroloff for, for teaming up with me. And, of course, he's painted a short shift Commodore already for the community. So yes. And thank it's you. It's been great. There's a couple of people that have already got behind it and are running the, the livery in some of the V8 rounds, which is fantastic. So we're going to try our hardest to get some updates from those teams that are running that skin. So anyone who is running it, make sure you get in contact with us. Let us know. Send us some pictures and uh, we'll pop it up on the Facebook page because it's always good. I know there's a lot of people out there that doesn't have access to possibly painting skins or getting people to do it. So, uh, yeah, it was nice of Mike to he put a, a new touch to it too because it was quite different from... Uh, the Falcon paint job, but something different for the Commodore, and I think come up all right. A little other, bit biased. <laughs> the other thing, too, obviously, we've got coloured rims now, too, so different coloured rims make the car look totally different, too. Rest of iRacing news, of course, in the last build, uh, the updates with the GT3. So we've seen the Ford get a bit of a, uh, well, I was going to say facelift, but it's sort of uh, underneath that's uh, turned into a GT3 car. Yeah, so there's now the, the GT2 car still there, but they've also added it as a GT3 version. Slightly tweaked a couple of little minor things, but um, essentially it's a totally different car to drive to the other three GT3 cars we have. So um, not seeing a lot of guys drive it as of yet, but I think as more and more people start to f get a feel for it and share some setups amongst each other, we'll see a few more guys start to drive that car in the future. And the excitement with that series too is because the, the news is it's a little bit old now, but uh, the release of the uh, news for the Aston Martin, isn't that going to be an incredible yeah, addition? that'll be what I'll be driving next <laughs> in GT3 races, oh, the Aston Martin. That'll be a brilliant car to drive and already rumours about other makes and marquees that are going to hopefully potentially come to iRacing with that GT3 series in mind. It's incredible, isn't it, when you think about everything that's been on offer. We've got uh, endurance races where we can have up to 24 hours or 25 hours for a session if you want to do qualifying and stuff, but that brings a whole new league to it. And then, of course, we've heard the news of the Nürburgring being scanned and that, with the addition of endurance racing, these GT3 updates and uh, everything else we've got on offer, it just uh, just means I think we're going to get more in, tr in trouble from the wives and girlfriends, I think. I think we're already there. <laughs> um, but just think of the calibre of 24-hour races we can have. We can have the Daytona 24, we can have the Spa 24, soon we can have a Monza 24 and a Nürburgring 24. Absolutely amazing tracks that already have massive world races. 
that we're going to have in the service soon or already do. It's too exciting to think about. There's just so much that's happening. Now, speaking of exciting racing, uh, the, the V8 uh, Premier Series, that's gone ahead in leaps and bounds and uh, a little bit of a hiatus at the moment, but there's a lot happening behind the scenes. We haven't forgot about the Premier Series, have we? No, we definitely haven't. There's a lot going on in the background. Um, if you are interested in, I'm talking a bit more to sponsor sides now, there are sponsorship packages available now. Uh, you can actually have naming rights to races, can be a series broadcast, a series sponsor or a broadcast sponsor, or obviously you can sign up some teams as well. Um, get in contact with us if you are interested in sponsorship towards the series. Obviously it isn't a cheap series to run with the hosting costs and things like that, but uh, hopefully we'll get some sponsorship. Hopefully we'll get enough that we can even start to fork out some prize money and things like that too. So that is the ultimate aim. Uh, first round, you ready? 22nd of February 2015 will be race day. Oh yeah. That is the weekend before the Clipsal 500. We'll run for 15 rounds, three enduros, 12 standards, and it will finish on November 16. Ooh, that's awesome. A year-long series is, is pretty exciting stuff. When you, you think exciting. about the, the calibre of drivers that we've got in our series, we're going to have the Holden versus Ford battle, and you're not going to have a champion every 12, or 12 weeks or so. It's going to be a year-long battle. That's, that's sensational. We can even have a... Uh a manufacturers championship now i hadn't actually thought of that manufacturers championship we'll have drivers championship we will have a team's championship i'll have a whole new website whole new broadcast package as well um we'll try and talk this bloke to coming back in the commentary <laughs> but who knows if that will happen but um the Don't fans are wanting the him to return yeah fans, well the fans are speaking Sam, it's yeah? funny isn't it I, I was surprised and i'll actually say thank you too there was a i was surprised about the amount of uh, messages that I got uh, when Seb and I did the intro for the OSR Bathurst 1000. That was a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, a big thanks to everyone who sent some kind words. It was it was actually good to get back in the uh, in the booth, I guess, a little bit, and uh, having Seb behind the wheel. And you know, who knows, he might have a bit of a flavour with uh, the new broadcast for the V8 series. Yeah, well, we're trying to incorporate some new things that haven't been done in our broadcast before so we'll see some whole new on-screen graphics we'll also have a brand new website for the premiere series as well that will be all linked in together everything will look the same and feel the same uh, all the registrations will happen uh, around the late january mark we'll start getting registrations in um, but yeah it will be a massive series and we really can't wait to get it up and running again um, really looking for the first round. We won't say where it is yet in case we change <laughs> where it is, but um, it will be a fantastic series and, and tracks that the V8 often gets forgotten about going to that we'll go to and uh, different layouts and different formats and things like that again. So it should be a fantastic series. I was lucky enough to sneak a look at old mate's phone and I saw the, the calendar that was sitting he there. He actually stole my phone. <laughs> <to see> the <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I must say, it's uh, it's quite an exciting schedule and... Uh, we won't, like you said, we're not going to re reveal anything just yet, but there was a couple of tracks that I did read out loud saying, oh, how about this one? So well, You probably yeah. hadn't thought about racing that for a long time. No, no, you're right too, because, um, and then you think about it, it's like, yeah, why haven't we been running that track? So, yeah, yeah exciting stuff, uh, big big year ahead, and, uh, mate, it's only going to get better, and just thinking about it again with the Holden versus Ford battle, bring it on. Yeah, can't wait, and... Um Really looking forward to it. Big thanks to the guys at OSR for all their hard work in the background. Seb's going to get back into it again with uh, streaming. Big thanks to Kane and JD for their help with it uh, in the past, last uh, season, last time around. Um, but, yeah, looking forward to this one. And Seb's been a busy boy too, because uh, a big thanks to Seb too. He's uh, jumping in behind the scenes here at Short Shift too, and uh, he's going to be editing the show and having some work behind the scenes. So... He's going to be a busy boy with uh, V8s online and short shift and everything else. I think he's going to love it, though. <laughs> he better. He, he, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> He'll get some hidden messages in, in amongst all of this, no doubt. <laughs> now, we did mention on the broadcast uh, of the OSR Bathurst 1000 that our plans were to have an episode of short shift from Winton, and unfortunately we didn't quite make it, but... Um, it was going to be exciting times. Uh, well, Justin Ruggie had a, had a pretty good run there, but uh, TDR's very own Josh Muggleton uh, on for a drive there, but uh, had nothing bad luck there, unfortunately. I think he got a bit of a drive on Friday and then dropped an engine and that was it. Weekend done. Uh, you don't think about how bad motorsport can burn you. you know, we're lucky enough where we just get in the simulator 
and uh, hit the reset button and off we go. But uh, when you put all that time, effort, yep. he travelled obviously and uh, made it all the way to Victoria and got to Winton and to only get a steer on Friday is a bit of a shame. But yeah, uh, nevertheless, yeah. But uh, and speaking of uh, Justin Ruggier too, big congratulations to him. He's uh, claimed the 2014 Kumo V8 Touring Car Championship in his rookie year. Sensational yeah, stuff. Amazing effort, and obviously his car as well has made history too. Yep. First uh, V, uh, sorry, first V8 supercar to win all three tiers of um, Australian V8 motorsport. So pretty special, isn't it? Fantastic. Unbelievable. And a couple of people were lucky enough uh, in the, the weekend gone of filming short shift right now at Phillip Island. Uh, Justin's been there doing some ride days there. And uh, yeah, some lucky people got to have a go around Phillip Island with Justin. And uh, mate, I'm uh, looking forward to seeing what uh, Justin's got in store next year because uh, after the things that he's achieved this year, uh, should be fairly exciting. Fingers crossed for him next year. Yeah, hopefully so. I mean, people would have stood up and taken notice of how well he's done. Not only in that, but in everything he's done motorsport-wise this year, yeah. he's been absolutely fantastic. So, fingers crossed we'll see him out in something else next season. Um, and he'll no doubt do very well at whatever he does. Same goes for Josh Muggleton too. Uh, he's sort of dropped a couple of hints on his Facebook page. He hasn't he hasn't quite told us what, what he's got in store, but he's got a couple of things in the pipeline, which is pretty exciting. And... Uh, He's been uh, pretty popular since returning from the GT Academy and uh, it's good to see that he's got all these opportunities popping up. Yeah, it's really good to see. I mean, he's done a fantastic job over there to actually get as far as he did, let alone get runner-up. But um, now he's just, hopefully he can take advantage of that and get some drives and hopefully he'll fill us in on some secrets and <laughs> we can announce it here on Short Shift. That'd be great. Yeah, so, Mark, eh? no, don't forget about us, all right? <laughs> Now, uh, before we wrap things up, it's pretty much a new segment here for, for Short Shift because, like I said, we didn't quite get to Winton and uh, missed a couple of opportunities to grab some interviews. But uh, a team that you may know a little bit about, for Motorsport. Never heard of it. <laughs> They're paying back to the community a little bit and uh, in the way of uh, sharing setups, which is pretty good. Yeah, um, Mitch has uh, been nice enough to take me on board. I'm having a bit of fun with those guys this season, so... Uh, big thanks to Mitch and Hayden and Matt and Jack. Who else is there? No, oh, that's about it. No one else. <laughs> no one else matters in that team. Like, Here comes a hate mail. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but it's sort of giving back. No one else is doing it. Brand new car. Why not give back? Uh, help some people out, and you know, it might pay off down the track. We might find a driver that no one else knows about and scoop them up, or who knows what will come from it. But nothing like helping out the community and a few people already are, have been using the setups and finding a lot of time with them too so and the other difference is too is guys that have been setting up their own cars now seeing a different way of doing it too and they're tweaking their own setups back to the similar style and they're finding their own time now so they've had setups for a few weeks they're now not needing those new setups because they're using their own because they've been able to tweak it because like they've it. seen how you can tweak the car in a different way from outside what they were thinking and we're also using that too from other guys sharing their setups back with us that we're seeing different ways as well and we're all developing it all together so it's been really good and i think overall the whole community has benefited from that not just us and not just the guys that have yeah. taken our setups and the best bit is too i know there's a couple of people out there thinking oh maybe it's just mitch putting a setup out there that's sort of near you or thereabouts but it's it's a real deal yep. it's pretty much what he he gets the best out of his race car so if you can see him punch out a number and he says that's the setup then that's exactly what he's giving you and i think that's amazing yep and if we're in a session and you say have you got a setup and we say no because we're still working on it and we don't want to give you rubbish so that's good that's the whole reason why we've said a few in a few sessions no because we're still working on the setup and we don't want to put something out that's not quite there yeah. not very good we want to make sure it's an actually a really really good setup that we're happy with before we share it to everyone else fantastic um now for people who don't know how to get those setups is it just on the forum yeah it's all been on the forum also on uh, the talking website talking.com.au um and also on there mitch is also uh, painting some skins as well so if you're after a skin painter and uh, not oh, sure where to go Mitch will uh, help you out oh beautiful you look out Mitch you're about to get busy over the next couple of months you'll love me for and that and you've only got one bloke to thank and he's sitting right next to me <laughs> he's got a website to build for the Premier Series so he can't get too many skins <laughs> well I don't know I think that's about it have we touched on everything there's so much happening I mean we, we missed probably some of the little bits of news from our uh, previous episode but um, now fingers crossed uh, we're going to make short shift a bit more of a regular thing too I know there's been some, some quite lengthy gaps between episodes but uh, it all comes down to time and when we can 
squeezings in between work commitments and everything else. But uh, hopefully some exciting times for Short Shift ahead and, uh, yeah, we'll be able to get on top of the news as it happens, fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed. And uh, big thanks to Seb for putting his hand up and saying, yes, he'll edit. Yep. It's taken a lot of pressure off my hands. Yep. So uh, big thanks to Seb and... Big thanks to Sam for all the work he's doing behind the scenes, Steve. Uh, we love it. It's good fun, and it's, uh, it's glad that uh, people actually tune in, and uh, it's good to get the, the messages that we get on Facebook about the show, so it's actually good that people are watching. And, and like I said, it's all about uh, the fans for iRacing. And if you guys have got uh, news that you want to share, uh, post pictures on our Facebook page, uh, by all means, please get in touch with us, uh, shortshift.tv, and uh, we'll do what we can to uh, give you guys a bit of a plug too, because pretty much this is all about you. If it wasn't for you guys racing and taking part and watching the show, this wouldn't happen so and we enjoy it it's good fun a little bit of uh, giving back to the fans have we got fans <laughs> well i, I racing mail. i think there's i racing fans i don't know if there's too many short shift fans <laughs> no, out no, there no. but uh, definitely so the i racing fans all right we might wrap things up thanks jay thank you very it's much it's been a warm man. one but uh, we managed to get on top of it yeah i'm not too drenched in sweat either that's <laughs> no, not too bad <laughs> oh you've been watching another episode of short shift for a big thanks of course to our good friends at direct clutch services and of course track racer until next time we'll see you then Bye for now.